So let's put this age old argument straight to bed. When was the last time coach said, Oi, get your hands off your knees? When you just finish a really grueling conditioning set. I know I can put my hand up on that one. I know many of you can at home as well. And it's probably giving you PTSD just thinking about this general idea. Now, it's super common for sports coaches, even PTs or SNCs, to not understand the influence of our posture and how it can actually affect our ability to recover from high intensity um, conditioning set. This video is all about you deciding for yourself on what do you think is gonna be the most effective way for your ability to recover on the field, in training, or just, just in general when you've been working really hard and your heart rate is you know, between 160 and you know, 200. So why does this argument even exist? Now, the old school adage of having your hands on your heads basically meant was we're trying to suck in more in, air in. Basically, bigger chest, puffing it out, was the idea behind that where you're able to get more air in. The second part behind it is the mental toughness side. Now, people that were seen as having their hands on, the, on their knees were actually seen as potentially being weak. Now, this was never a good sign in the coach's eyes, especially um, early in the day. So we are not even going that far back, maybe in, that, in the previous last five years and even before that as well. But for me as a strength coach, and I know a lot of you young and up, up and coming coaches, but really it's a lack of understanding of our physiology and the body's physiological systems at play. So let's look at the two most common positions that we use to recover. So the hands on head. So this basically is the position where you have your hands interlocked behind your head, chest up, and you're trying to stand nice and tall to get as much oxygen in, or not oxygen, but air in, uh, per breath. Like I said before, a lot of people still think if you open up the chest, we're gonna be able to get more air in. The other point is, as I mentioned, coaches think this position is a far superior in terms of not looking weak to the opponents or to, um, to your opposition. Now with the hands on knees position, this position really refers to having your hands on your knees, bent over, bit of a kythotic and rounded back. Your eyes are either looking directly down or slightly forward a couple of meters as well. Now this is the position you commonly see with athletes that have done high intensity bouts and, and default to when there's a rest in play. Now I can state as many examples, I'm just gonna pop them up here. Usually your coach will tell you from this position to get your hands on your heads or get your hands on your hips instead. Let's bring a different perspective and let's bring some research into this age old argument. So Michelson's et al paper showed a significant increase in the ability to get more air into the body and expel more carbon dioxide with the hands on knees. What also happened was the increase in heart rate recovery. The mechanism why we'll discuss later on. Now, Bushita et al. studies standing versus as various sitting and lying positions. He showed a significant difference in the heart rate reserve. HRR for short, refers to the end ranges of the measured heart rate. The larger the range, the greater the ability to recover. If the heart HRR was low, this would mean the heart rate would remain elevated, thus leading to a quicker time to fatigue not what we want in sport and training. So what is actually happening? We have what's called a zone of apposition. This refers to the vertical area of the diaphragm that inserts on the lower part of the ribs, extended to the top point of the diaphragm. When the ribs are orientated internally, for example, with your hands on your knees, this creates a greater position to be able to take a larger breath in, hence creates a larger ZOA. When you place your hands on your head, we reduce the ZOA thus reduce the tidal volume, or simply put the amount of air that enters in and out of our lungs per breath cycle. Now, if you extrapolate that over a minute, basically what that means, having your hands on your knees versus having your hands on your head, basically means you're gonna get more air in per minute, full stop. You can actually do this simple experiment at home. If you actually take five deep breaths in with your hands on your head, versus straight afterwards having five breaths with your hands on your knees, you're gonna notice a significant difference in terms of how much air you can draw in and expel out per breath. Just imagine that you've just completed your conditioning set, whether it is your MAS, whether it's a, what, your 2K, 1K, whatever it may be, which position do you think is gonna be more optimal for you to recover faster before your next set? Now, I'll give you a real world example. 
For those who are currently going through the pre-season or even the off-season testing at the moment, if you've done a 2K time trial, 1K up, yo-yo, beat test, and you're really pushing yourself to the edge, what do you want to do pretty much straight away? Most people, they'll want to slump over or they'll want to fall onto their back and put their legs in a sit-up position. Or well, what is occurring, you're going to have a greater ZOA, which is going to allow more air to come in and be expelled out per breath. What does this all mean at the end of the day by having your hands on your knees? Well, first of all, you're going to be able to recover faster. Second of all, you're going to be able to play for longer. The fact that you're actually recovering a lot faster, your heart rate's going to come down and you're going to be able to keep your heart rate lower for longer. You're going to increase your time to fatigue. You'll also produce more higher quality efforts in your training and also in your game as well. And since fatigue is likely to be lower, you further reduce the likelihood of injury, um, injury due to fatigue. In summary, you're going to be able to recover faster from your bouts, whether it's from training, practice, or even in game, you're gonna be able to be a lot smarter in terms of when you take your recovery in as well, when there's small breaks in play, hands on knees really quickly, take a couple of deep breaths, and that'll help to bring your heart rate down a little bit more. And ultimately, it's gonna benefit you in the long term as well. The longer you can keep fatigue down, the better you're going to be able to perform and, the great, and reduce likelihood of injury as well. If you like this content, please subscribe and share this with your teammates or even your coaches as well. They might be thinking in the old, the old school way, their hands on your heads is far superior, but today I've just presented something a little bit different. So I'll see you soon.